And if you're looking for more lights to get out and see this Christmas season, especially if you are focused on the reason for the season, then we've got you covered. Joining us today on Good Things is Dimble Crow of Tupelo. He's been putting up lights at his home for Christmas for the last 18 years. So welcome, Dimble. Yes, thank you very much. Well, this is exciting. I love to see when families can keep traditions only for a few years, but you guys have almost kept the tradition of your lavish light display for two decades. So what inspired you 18 years ago to start putting out lights? (laughs) Well, there's several reasons that I do it. Uh, The first thing is, is I just love this time of year. This is the birth of Christianity. Without this time of year, we would not have our religion of Christianity. And so to me, it's an extremely exciting time that this is the birth of Christianity, the birth of Christ. And when he was born, everything was changed. In fact, one of the things that I do, I put a banner out uh, probably about 10 or 11 years ago. And on the, on the banner, it says, guide us to thy perfect light. It's quoting John eight twelve, And so I show that. And, and, of course, I have all the lights in my, on my house, which are all coordinated to, uh, to Christmas music. And so that's one reason that I do it. The second thing, when I was a kid, um, our neighbor, uh, every other year, had this display that he would put out on his house. And it was a real simple display. Basically, he outlined his roof of his house in uh, lights. And then on the top, he had a Santa Claus and reindeer. And the reindeer were moving. Of course, the front deer was Rudolph, had a nice red nose. And Santa was in his sleigh. And Santa would come out of his sleigh and go in front of the reindeer to the chimney. And then he'd pop down the chimney and then pop up in the sleigh again. And so I remember as a child sitting in that yard and just watching that thing for as long as mom would let me stay outside. So I was always fascinated with the, uh, the lights and and doing something extra special with Christmas. Now, if I uh, read correctly, Denville, you started humble. You only had like three maybe trees, kind of started small, and then it kind of snowballed into bigger lights, more sophisticated lights over the year. I mean, each year, did you just go into it thinking, add a little here, add a little there, or was the whole plan maybe to see how big you could grow it over the years? Well, you're right. I originally started out with uh, with three trees. It was two six-foot and one eight-foot tree. And that was really neat in and of itself. Of course, the technology has changed a tremendous amount since that time. Uh, And the way it was is each tree was broken up into four sections. And each of the sections had a strand of green lights, a strand of red lights, and a strand of white lights. And then there's lots of things you can do making each section light up separately and under different colors. And so I started out with that, and I think I had some lights, maybe some icicle lights uh, across the front of the house that were hooked to it uh, that also danced with the music. Um, and then just each year I decided, well, I want to add something, add something new each year. So each year I have tried to either add a new light or section of lights or change out the lights as the technology has changed or add new music. And so each year you start adding stuff over 18 years, it changes a lot. Do you notice, Dimble, that your community around you or maybe your neighborhood started to look forward to the Crow display, Christmas display every year? Did you start to get whispers that maybe you were the house to stop at or to see on Christmas Eve or to make sure, you know, they went by and enjoyed? Or did you just sort of think that oh, I'm putting it up and I enjoy it whenever I come home at night and see it? Well, I, again, I wanted to uh, put it out so people could enjoy it. Of course, I enjoy it, but I wanted to put it out where people could enjoy it. And also, I, I've always said I don't want it to be a nuisance to my neighbors. Uh, I always said if it ever becomes a nuisance that I would stop doing it. Um, so I ask people when you come by, please be polite to everybody. Don't honk the horns. Make sure that you're aware of cars trying to get in and out of driveways and things like that. Um And and it's been amazing, especially over the last few years, uh, how many people will come up to me and go, I want you to know your house is a tradition for us. We have relatives that are coming down from somewhere up north, and uh, they were running late this year, and they would tell it. They called and said, look, don't go by the Crow's house until we get there. And I've had other people tell me, yeah, we'll, uh, our kids will come into town, and what we will do is, is we'll go, and we'll go to some place for dinner, and then after that we come by your house. Or every Christmas Eve, we bring the uh, the kids by your house before we tuck them in bed at night. So it's kind of been amazing how it's turned into a tradition for so many people. 
Uh, in fact, come January or February, I actually had people ask me, are you going to do the Christmas display this year? So even 10, 11 months in advance are asking me about They don't it. even give you time to really, you know, enjoy having gotten everything taken down. Well, these kind of displays, uh, Denville, take a, take a lot of effort. They take a lot of planning. When do you and your family, because I know it's a family affair to help you get out there and put up all the lights and sort of synchronize everything. When does the crows start thinking about Christmas? Well, so we actually start before Halloween. Um, it does take a lot of planning and it does take a lot of uh of laying out, making sure everything's right, and, and then after it gets all laid out, we have to hook it all up. And so we actually start placing things out right before Halloween. And then how long does it take you to take it down? Is it Does it go up faster or come down faster? Oh, it comes down way faster because it, it, you have to plug in everything. And so that, that takes almost as long as it does to, uh, to hook it up. Of course, with the technology now, that's gotten quicker because now instead of controlling one strand of light at a time, I can con control um, a, a whole, like I've got a mega tree. It's about 22 feet tall. There's one on either side of the house, and it's got about 1,200 light bulbs. And with the technology now, um, I plug in 16 things or 16 strands, but we can actually co go down to control each light bulb. In other words, each light bulb has red, green, and blue in it, LED, and it can make up to 2 million different colors. And so we have the ability to control it all the way down to a single light bulb instead of a single strand of lights. So that, that's helped speed things up a lot. You seem to be up on the technology when it comes to Christmas displays. Denvo, do you, do you get a magazine for this? Is there like a Facebook group where you get, keep up with all the technology? I would, wouldn't even know where to go to figure out how to make the most efficient <laughs> Christmas display. <laughs> no, there's, uh, there's places you can go on the web and, and search for these kind of things. And uh, there's groups. Um, I think there's a whole website called planetchristmas.com um, that uh, he plays Christmas music 365 days a year. gives you a countdown of how many days it is for Christmas, and he, uh, he, he puts out a lot of the technology there. And, and then there's other places that you can go and look and find the, uh, what's out. And it's kind of amazing, actually, what's, what's out there now. What's your favorite song that you have synchronized to your lights? Oh, I have to say Mannheim Steamroller. How long does it take to see the whole light, like if we stop, if we come and enjoy it, or is it just a continuous sort of songs, or is it just a certain number? Is there a playlist, I think, is where I'm going with it. Yeah, and so I don't know. It will probably take over an hour to listen to all of them. I think there's about 22 different songs. I haven't counted them in a while, but I think there's about 22 different songs uh, that play, so it would take you over an hour. Um, in fact, it's kind of funny. I had somebody come by or talk that I ran to the other day, and they were telling me that they come by each year, and then they said, well, you added some new songs this year. And I said, no, I hadn't had anything this year. And they go, well, I've never heard those before. And so what had happened was they just didn't get here and watch it during that period of time. When do you take them down, Denville? It kind of depends on the weather. Um, we turn everything off uh, after the uh, January 1st weekends, whatever that weekend runs through. Uh, come that Sunday night after January 1st, we'll shut it down. And then if it's not real cold, we'll start taking it down. If it's pretty cold, we may wait till February to take it all down. That gives people an extra opportunity to see it, but we want people to get out and enjoy it, especially if they're in the Tupelo area. Maybe they are, you know, making their way um, around the town and they haven't stopped by the Crow's house. I know you may not want to give your address. Now it feels weird giving your personal address on the radio, but how can people find you if they want to? Yeah, so the easiest way to find us is we're at the back end of the country club. We're in what's called the Wendover Sunningdale subdivision. Wendover Sunningdale subdivision. Uh, it's pretty easy to get to. You come past the um, furniture market, go past the country club, and you'll see our subdivision on the right. Uh, you just come to the very back end of that subdivision, and mine's the house with all the lights on it. Well, congratulations for creating such a memorable moment there in, in a time where it can be so busy and bum buzzled with all the things going on. You've managed to shine special light on the reason for the season, Denville, and that is the birth of Jesus. And you did it in light, so that's pretty cool. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed doing it, and uh, I really enjoy hearing the stories that come back to me from from people saying how it's become a tradition to them and how their grandkids love it. And um, uh, I hope it makes an impact on people. All righty. Well, Merry Christmas to you and yours. 
Merry Christmas. Thank you for having me on. All righty. You guys stick with us, though. We've got more good things for you coming up next.